Well, we're not in Oak Haven today. We've taken a field trip, and the reason is um, we wanted to talk about this bush, which is a beautiful bush. I'm sure most of you are familiar with it. Uh, this is October 17th or 18th or so, and uh, if you drive around in Ohio much, uh, probably most of the United States, you see a lot of this. This is, uh, this is burning bush, uh, Euonymus allatus. It's also called winged Euonymus. Uh, very prevalent in a lot of landscaping because it is just so gorgeous in the fall. I mean, it's hard to beat that. Um, we used to have one outside of our house. Uh, we got rid of it because it, uh, while it looks really pretty right now, it's very invasive and it was causing a lot of trouble in our woods. Uh, so we, we cut it out. Um, so let me just talk a little bit about, uh, about winged euonymus and uh, burning bush. Again, beautiful fall color. There's not much that, uh, that beats this fall color. If you look at the, the stems, they have this corky ridges along the stems, kind of a greenish stem with a corky ridge. Then you have these, these fruit, which are pretty fruit, but uh, pretty inconspicuous. It's definitely not something that's planted for the fruit. Uh, the fruit have these orange uh, berry-like um, fruit and then this purplish sheath that's over it. Uh, it uh, it's kind of like other Euonymuses. Euonymi? Euonymuses? I'm not sure how that works. Um, but, uh, but this looks distinctive and, uh, and it shows that it's the non-native um, winged Euonymus. So we're going to talk about why we had this in our landscape and why we took it out. And I want you to come over here in the landscape of these, uh, this house that we're at right now. So at this home that we're visiting that has this, this uh, beautiful burning bush, they have this woodland here. Pretty weedy, they obviously don't, they don't maintain it. They've got honeysuckle growing and fruiting here. Uh, they've got autumn olive growing up. They've got winter creeper covering the ground. Over here they have a, a calorie pear sprout. Uh, somebody in the neighborhood probably has a Bradford pear that uh, that produced fruit and is causing problems. And then we have the start of the winged euonymus, or the burning bush, which obviously was not planted here. There's bunches of them scattered all through here because, it, as you can see, it produces a lot of seeds. The birds take these seeds, they, they take them off into the woods, and they spread them all over the place. And they are just a, a horrendous um, uh, management problem. Uh, we'll show you some, some video on our property where we've taken out all of the big ones, but uh, they, they've root suckered and they've just formed a mat, a lot like their, their relative here. This is also a Euonymus. This is winter creeper. A lot of people plant this as a, as a landscaping plant. Um, we, had, we had this at one point as a landscaping plant in our yard. Uh, we have since removed it all because it is just so, so very invasive. So the winter creeper will form a dense mat several inches thick and just fill, fill the area. Now, fortunately, winter creeper doesn't spread by seeds so much until it hits a tree. And it hits a tree or a bush and it will creep up the, the tree or the bush and it's not doing it anywhere. It's doing it somewhat on that huge honeysuckle in the back there. And it won't produce um, flowers and seeds until it gets maybe six feet above the ground and then it will start producing seed. So I've never seen it flower or seed on the ground, but it does spread incredibly. Uh, j just to complete this inventory of non-native invasives that are growing in this woodlot, um, we have a, a cane of uh, multiflora rose growing up here. We've got Japanese honeysuckle going here that's starting to grow up into the um, the goldenrod. There's there's just a lot of things that... Uh, it's, this has obviously not been managed for native habitat. So I say we've gotten rid of the, the burning bush in our house. We've, we've gotten rid of the burning bush out of the landscaping. Uh, the burning bush in the on the property, again, we've got 60 acres, so there's a lot of burning bush that we still need to deal with. But I wanted to introduce why we're getting rid of it and what the problem is. And if you look through here, and maybe you can just scan along here and see all of these little burning bushes sprouting up. These will grow into full-size bushes, and you can see more of them further on into the woods. 
but just along the edge here you can see how prevalent this is and how how much it uh, it can take over this one shows really well the the corky stems that we were talking about uh, on the winged euonymus or burning bush great color so where you find this, I'll put in a range map that talks about where this, where you can find this and whether this is something that's a problem in your area or not. When I look at it uh, on one of the invasive species sites and it shows the distribution in the United States, it seems to be mostly in the northeastern part of the United States. Um, but it doesn't even show it in our county in Ohio and obviously it, it is very prevalent in our county in Ohio, so I'm not sure how well uh, th those, uh, those range maps are, are kept up. So, now that we have it, what are we going to do with it? This what we, is you know, big enough that we will come through and we will cut it off at the base and treat it with a 20% uh, glyphosate solution. So I will go through and cut each stem. The smaller stuff that grows up, that uh, I'll show you a little bit later, uh, we actually spray uh, when, it's, when it hasn't turned color, when it's still green, we'll, we'll spray it on the ground with a 2% a, uh, glyphosate solution. So I'm proposing that we should not be selling burning bush in uh, landscaping, what do you call those, nurseries? In nurseries and landscapers shouldn't be calling out for burning bush because it is so invasive. Now, now, let me just clarify that. They're doing a lot of research and trying to find a sterile version of burning bush, which would be great. Then we, we could have it in the landscape and it wouldn't be affecting our natural areas. Uh, from what I can find, there was uh, research uh, in about 2011 uh, that someone had a, a sterile version of burning bush, a tetraploid, so they've messed up the, uh, the genetics of it a little bit so that it wouldn't produce sterile uh, seeds. Uh, and last I saw that they were going through a 10-year trial period to see whether that was going to be successful or not. I can't find anything more about that. Maybe someone knows something about that and could leave a comment about it in the comments. Very intriguing. I don't see anybody who's advertising it or, or pushing it, so I'm wondering if something happened that it, uh, it didn't work out. There have been a lot of plants that they're supposedly were sterile and then they were used for horticultural purposes for landscaping and then ended up not being sterile. Uh, you think of Bradford pears, uh, which then are, uh, they're, they're, they won't produce viable fruit with other Bradford pears, but you put another pear species in there or pear variety in and they will produce uh, viable fruit and we have uh, serious problems with pears now uh, escaping into the into the wild. So, if I want to take away this beautiful red landscaping plant and that option, that part of the palette of a, a landscape architect, what do I what do I want to give them back? What do I want to say that you could use in place of it? <clears throat> as far as around here, central <coughs> or south uh, southwestern Ohio, we are lucky. <coughs> We've got flowering dogwood, which is a great native plant. It looks beautiful in the landscape. You know, here we have it, we brought it in from the woods and we have it in our landscaping. It turns a great red color in the fall. It has a great color in the spring. And then it just has a beautiful form. So it, it's not exactly the same growth form as a burning bush, because a burning bush is smaller and this is a bigger tree. But if you want to add red fall color into your landscape, Dogwood is a good way of doing it. If you're looking for something that would be appropriate, that would be smaller, <clears throat> more on the, the shrub side, here's another, what we'll call native plant. This is Father Gila. Now I realize that this has more of an orangey look than it does a red look. But again, it's a beautiful plant. It's showy. It, it, it serves an important part of the landscape. I say that it's it's kind of native. It's not native to Ohio. It's native to southeastern United States. But I've never heard of it being invasive. So this is something that you can get uh, online. You can find them in, in nurseries. Um, not a lot of them, but maybe if we started to push things that would be not invasive uh, in our nurseries and we started asking for things by name, we would have less of the burning bush options and more of the Father Gila options. So when we're talking about burning bush, there is a Euonymus that's native. This is our native Wahoo, which also comes up, has 
kind of a reddish color in the fall, although when you look online, uh, people don't necessarily mention it. Uh, but there are easy ways to tell it apart from our uh, the burning bush that we're trying to get rid of. The stem is smooth. It doesn't have the corky ridges. The leaves, whoops, the leaves have a very distinct petiole. You can see that. Not sure where you're at. Um, so the petiole is the stem of the leaf, and uh, with the winged euonymus, it's very, very short, and here it's more distinct. And then the, the fruiting structure, where before we had like a single seed with kind of a purplish sheath on it, here you've got four seeds surrounded by this pinkish sheath. I think maybe there's one down here that has started to open. You can see the seeds inside. So this is uh, Wahoo. So this is our native Euonymus, one of our native Euonymus. There, there, there's actually several. Julie was pointing out that we have very few of these around, so it's, it's, uh, it's not likely that you run into this as much as you run into the other. As I was working today, I came upon this, this patch of sprouts of burning bush that is just endless, and it is so dense, and it just, it, it's, it's everywhere. So I have sprayed this, I sprayed it uh, yesterday, it has since rained, which has probably washed out um, a lot of the, the, um, the dye, but the herbicide is still here. Um, but I wanted to just give people an appreciation of just how much it takes over if you allow it. You know, when you're having conversations with people and they say, oh, burning bush is not much of an issue because, you know, I have one in my yard and it doesn't seem to seed underneath it, so it must be okay. Uh, it's not. You know, it gets spread through these areas. And, uh, you know, I, I hate to to treat an area like this where I basically just have to spray everything uh, because I, I can't spray individual plants. So there's a lot of, you know, Christmas fern in here and ginger and other nice things that uh, may not make it, but they definitely wouldn't have made it if I had left all of this burning bush to just grow on its own. And this goes on for probably a hundred feet. 100 feet down this down this slope. So, I just that was a brief introduction to burning bush. Uh, many of the things that we have in our landscaping ex escape out into the woods and cause us problems. So, we really have to think about what's uh, what we want to what we want to encourage in our landscaping. Um, if you have this in your landscaping, give it some thought whether you want to keep it around. If you have the winter creeper in your landscaping, think about whether that's a good thing to have or not. Barberry, we've removed all the barberry from our landscaping also. I know there's at least a few states that it's illegal to, uh, to sell um, burning bush. Most states, you can still find it in a nursery, even though they know it's, it's invasive. But it's, it's a huge cash crop for the landscaping industry. So hopefully you learned something when you're driving along the, the roads and you see people who have planted burning bush out in the yard, you'll give it some more thought. Um, give it some more thought for your own personal landscaping. If you like this video, please hit the like button. We always appreciate subscribers. If you, if you agree or disagree with me, I'd appreciate comments. Uh, start a conversation there in the comments section. Thanks for watching.